Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! After the full start earlier this autumn, when Diane James lasted just 18 days in the job, UKIP's search for a new leader continues today. Nomination closed at midday, and our political correspondent Alex Forsyth is keeping a close eye on the contest for us. Alex, it seems that the nominees are dropping like flies. Yeah, when this contest was first announced, which in itself was a bit of a surprise after Diane James did just 18 days in the job, there was a whole flurry of people that thought they'd throw their hat in the ring for this uh, next UKIP leader role. But as it stands of today, when nominations have just closed, we know of only four that are left in the running. This morning, the latest candidate to drop out was Raheem Kassam. Now, he's a former aide to Nigel Farage. He was one of the first to declare that he'd stand for the leadership this time round. He only did his formal launch on Friday, so a couple of days ago. And over the weekend in the newspapers, he got quite a lot of traction, quite a lot of coverage. So I think it's fair to say it came as a surprise when he decided to withdraw this morning. Now, he put out a statement saying, why and what he said was he thought the path to narrow path to victory was too narrow read into that that he thinks that senior figures in the party are getting behind Paul Nuttall and so there was little chance of him winning he also cited some anger at the media saying journalists had turned up at his parents home and also fundraising now it was thought that the big multi-millionaire backer Aaron Banks was behind Raheem Kassam but Raheem Kassam saying in his statement this morning uh, that they only had enough money to run a digital campaign based on Westminster he didn't think that would be effective that's part of the reason he's pulled out. I have spoken to Mr Kassam, who's not doing interviews today, and he said he still did have the support of Aaron Banks, but what he didn't want to do is take a lot of money in donations to effectively come second in this race, so he stood down. We'll get the final list of candidates this afternoon, and then the hustings start tomorrow. Right, and did he also imply that the, he thought the, uh, the system, the process, had been somewhat rigged? He said he had asked a series of questions over the weekend about the integrity of the process and he wasn't convinced by it. He's not going as far as to say that the process has been rigged, but what he's implying is that the weight of the party machine is getting behind Paul Nuttall, who some see as the front runner, some see as the uh, one potential unity candidate who can really lead UKIP out of the mess they've been in for the past year or so. And so I think Raheem Kassam's implication is that he didn't think he could win against the weight of the party machine and the senior figures who want Paul Nuttall to succeed Nigel Farage as it currently stands who's interim leader and that's another part of the reason that he's decided to pull out so we're left with four names in the frame as it stands but no final confirmation from UKIP yet as to the shortlist uh, and then we'll tip into the debates with the new leader expected to be announced by the end of this month. All right, Alex Forsyth, thank you. And we've been joined by one of the four remaining candidates to be UKIP leader, Peter Whittle, who is a member of the London Assembly. Welcome to The Morning, Daily Joe. Politics. Morning. So, you must be pleased that Raheem Kassam has withdrawn. Um, I'm not particularly pleased, actually, though, because um, I've known Raheem for a long time, and he's an exceptionally talented guy and a very individual guy. And I think that what the leadership contest is showing this time as opposed to maybe the last one we had, is it's really the contest we should have been having all along. There are people of real merit, real talent, and I, I would want as many people as possible to be on show. So, but he's I'm, backing you, so you must be pleased, or are you worried by that? Not at all worried. It's very kind of him to back me, very kind of him to back me. But, you know, I think the fact is, when you look at the people who are standing now, uh, they are extremely plausible, talented people. And that's what people have to know about our party. Right. And do you, I mean, how big a chance do you really have of winning against Paul Nuttall, Suzanne Evans, Paul Nuttall seeming to be the runaway candidate? Well, you don't sort of enter these things, you know, with a kind of council of despair. <laughs> and uh, you no. absolutely don't. And you have to resist questions like that. <laughs> and uh, no, I mean, the fact is, is I love this party. I've been in it for four years now. I've been culture spokesman for three. And this year we had a real breakthrough and got two uh, AMs onto the London Assembly, which uh, people in said, oh, you'll never do that in London. So I've pretty much dedicated my life to you. But the party has gone through a series of convulsions, you might mm -hmm. say, uh, politically. Losing a leader after 18 days is certainly careless, to say the least. But Mr Kassam said he was going to be the Faragist candidate. Mm -hmm. Is that the mantle you are now going to assume? Um, I'm a great supporter of Nigel, always have been. He's the reason I came into this party. Uh, there's no revisionism going on there, so far as I'm concerned. Uh, basically, you know, Nigel is 
a towering figure. Right, and isn't that why the party's in, you know, having the sort of problems it, was, it is now? Because no, no. he's gone. It was, going. it was always going to be a little bit tough. It was never going to be smooth picking a new leader because you have got somebody like that. And he's the most influential politician we've had in two generations. However, and no one is going to be going back on his legacy or in, in any way. But of course, what I think is that we are at a position now where we could go on to a really brilliant act two. Right, whatever that might be. It's very simple. We had basically our first peak, our first goal was the referendum, and we got that. Our next goal will be to replace Labour as the real opposition in this country. Right, oh, well, what do you say to that, Debbie Abrahams? Well, um, I, I prefer really to know more about your policies. Other than uh, leaving Europe, I'm really not clear what, exactly what UKIP stands for. So, uh, you know uh, particularly around the NHS, which I know P Paul Nuttall has, has absolutely slated. Um, no. No, no, uh, yeah, well, no. I've got evidence to... No, no, to the well, you obviously therefore do know something about yeah. uh, our policies. The fact is that... The, the, with UKIP, everybody pretty much knows what we stand for, which is unusual in politics these days. But then interesting that there are divisions within the party, if that was the case, you no. think there might be some consensus, because Mr Kassam says he is worried about the integrity of the process, uh, the leadership contest as well. Are you worried about it? Has he no. got a point? No, 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 it's not a picture I recognise at all, not at all. I think it's all been actually t uh, done very, very fairly and, and very professionally, you know, I mean, there's no question about that. So he's wrong about that, or do you think it's just because he knew he wasn't going to win? No, no. I think I, it's not a picture I recognise. I think it's been um, actually to, uh, uh, the whole progress of the leadership campaign has been, I think, very, very smooth this time because we know what's at stake. We know what's at stake and we want this party to be a success because there are people, particularly in the Midlands and the North, who it's not just a question of being politically opportunist. We have an absolute duty to speak for those people. And that's why I want us to be the official opposition uh, in years to come. And that therefore, 2020 is the big start for that. Right. You could say, though, actually, now the referendum has happened and Brexit is, is going to occur. There's actually no need for UKIP whatsoever. Labour could, uh, despite their own internal problems, could begin to claw back some of the support they lost to UKIP. Um, no I chance. mean, I'm only putting this... No, in, no, 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 there's no chance of this. In terms, though, of putting forward your own mm. individual uh, vision for the party, yeah. um, do you think UKIP is ready to become the first UK-wide political party with a gay leader? Oh, of course. I mean, we, I was the only gay leader, uh, the, the, gay, the gay candidate in the mayoral race, for example. I mean, not bad going, you know, for a supposedly homophobic party. You know, my, my, uh, 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 my um, fellow assembly member, uh, David Curtin, is a black guy. This is, we're the most diverse group, actually, on the London Assembly. And this, despite, <laughs> as you say, claims of homophobia, have, there, have you experienced that in the none, party? None. None. I've none had nothing but support. None at all. Right. And, I mean, all of these things are very, very old charges, really, Joe. I mean, the fact is, is that what we have now in Britain are people who are not spoken for, they do not trust the Tories, and they're quite right not to trust the Tories, and in fact, um, I think there's no chance, whatever the kind of speeches that Theresa May makes, um, that they will go over to the Tories. And in fact, Labour now look down on them. They treat them with contempt. They Although treat there their have been own defections, base with of course, to, to the Tories from, from uh, UKIP since Brexit, since the referendum, as you know. Um, Fair weather you, friends. Will sorry. you stay, will you stay, well, including um, Stephen Wolfe at the time, who certainly thought about it. Uh, I know he's not now running um, in the contest. But are you going to stay till the very end of this uh, competition? Well, to be I leader? say we're all in it to win it. Right. So you won't be dropping out. Just we're all in it to win it. And so I think that uh, I think that the question is, is that people will see, looking at our hustings, which are happening tomorrow in London, then in Wales, and there are two more next week, they will see the breadth of vision and the breadth of talent there is in this party. Peter Whittle, thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. Another candidate has withdrawn from the race to be UKIP leader. Raheem Kassam ended his campaign just three days after it began, blaming the top of the party for treating the contest like a coronation. His withdrawal means there are now four candidates in contention. Nominations closed today and the result is due at the end of November. And just to warn you, this report from our political correspondent Michael Crick does contain flash photography from the start. Of the Faragists, I am the Faragest. It was only on Friday that Rahim Kassam formally launched his campaign in a pub, presenting himself as son of Farage. But he's been dogged by questions about scores of offensive tweets he's sent over the last few months, many too abusive to show in full. 
Aren't these the, the tweets of a drunken lout rather than somebody who aspires to be leader of the opposition, as you were just saying now? Mm. Um, were you drunk when you wrote any lout. of these? No, I wasn't. As nominations to replace Nigel Farage close today, four names are on the ballot, with the result in four weeks' time. Today really is a great day for our party. No doubt we've had some challenging times over the last couple of months. Now we've got some really good, thorough candidates that want to move this party and forward, that have vision. Are going to pull out? I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that they That's are committed. entirely confident. I am entirely confident. So why did Kassam quit? Some friends say he's seen a chance in the US, where his pal and former boss Steve Bannon now runs Donald Trump's campaign. Tonight, we caught up with Kassam, back at the Westminster Arms. So, Mr Kassam? Yes. Why have you pulled out? What's the real reason? Well, uh, I took a view this weekend that the, uh, the competition wasn't a fair fight. Uh, the party was treating it like a coronation. Um, and I wasn't Coronation for whom? Paul Nuttall? Yeah, I think so. You think they're trying to fix it for Mr Nuttall? I don't know if about, about fix, but the entire party machine is being used in his favour. And, you know, I like Paul, he's a good guy, but the election's not a fair fight. Some people say, your, some of your friends say that you uh, really s seen an opportunity across the Atlantic. Donald Trump could be about to win the American presidency. You want to get over there and uh, get a job with him? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't had any, any talks with them. Um, but your friend Mr Bannon is running the Trump campaign. Yeah, look, you know, that would be a good, a good thing if it happened. But, uh, you know, I've not, you know I've, not, I've not inquired about that. You know. Kassam says he'll fly to Washington tomorrow to do his US radio show, he says, not to help the Trump campaign. Michael Crick, Channel 4 News, Westminster.